In this video, I'm going to go over something that I get questions about all the time, whether it be about what I'm doing or the specific tools that I have, because admittedly, I usually breeze through this in my build videos. So now I can still breeze through it, but I have a place to send people if they want more information. I know budget is a subjective term and varies for everyone, but factually speaking, price-wise, these tools that I have here are on the lower end of the price range when it comes to these machines. So if you're looking at getting started into milling rough lumber, you might be looking at these machines. So first things first, why would you want to mill up your own lumber from roughs on wood that you can buy at a wood dealer or heck, even someone in their backyard that slices it up? Number one would be price. Here in the Midwest, we have Menards and they actually do have a pretty big selection of hardwoods that you can buy, but they are ridiculously expensive. Um, the Home Depots around me, I believe all they carry is poplar and red oak, besides of course pine. So number one would be options and price. You can buy rough sawn lumber for a fraction of the cost. Of course, you do have to have the money invested into the tools, but honestly, if you're even a little bit serious about woodworking, it doesn't take long at all. You'll make up that money really quick. My second reason would be quality. If you buy wood from a big box store, it may have been perfect when they milled it, or it may not have been even to begin with. But by the time it gets shipped to the store, it sits there on the shelves, you bring it home, let it acclimate to your shop, that wood is gonna move. It could twist, it could cup, it could bow, it'll expand and contract. So if you're trying to build something with really good quality, I'm speaking from a quality perspective, nice tight joints, square builds, being able to bring the wood here to your shop, let it acclimate, and then mill it perfectly yourself and put it together before the wood can move or do anything, you're gonna get a lot better builds being able to mill up your own lumber. All right, so let's move in and talk about the rigid six and one eighth inch joiner, which is where my milling process usually starts. This is the, I believe this is the cheapest floor standing joiner on the market. You can get smaller, cheaper bench top models that you put right on your workbench, but I believe this is the most affordable actual floor standing joiner that, on the market that you can buy. So this has a three straight knife cutter head on it. And I'll leave links to all these tools down below so you can look up more of the specs if you're interested. I'll actually run through the process with a board here in a minute to show everything. But what a joiner does is it will flatten one face and then you can flip that flat face up along the fence and get the corresponding edge 90 degrees to that flat face that you just created. In front of the knives here, the first table is lower than the second table. So as you're feeding the board through, you always keep constant pressure on the outfeed side as you're going through. And as long as your uh, reference surface here is flat, the knives are going to cut what it needs to be to make the board flat and match your table here. As you can see with this board right here, there's a bit of a twist in it. So as you run this board through the joiner, it would take off the two high points and uh, create a flat face. So do I think this rigid is a good joiner? Absolutely. It has done everything I've needed it to that it's capable of size wise. I've, I've never beveled it or anything. I set it up square when I got it and it has stayed that way. I've, I don't move anything. I want it to flatten boards and square up an edge and that's what it does. It does it perfectly. As far as dust collection, when I first got it, I didn't have an actual four inch dust collector. So I put this reducer on here to go down to my shop vac. That doesn't work at all. It'll, it'll just clog up. So usually what I did, I would just take this off and just let it pile up here and then clean it up afterwards when I'm done. But now that I hook a four inch hose to it, the chip collection is phenomenal. It basically captures everything except when you're to the end of a board, a few chips will spit out at the end. But other than that, it collects everything really well. So even though this joiner gives me great results, it is a tool that I'm looking to upgrade. My build videos are usually sped up just to get to the point and show all the steps needed to complete a project. But if I'm running a six inch wide piece of hardwood through here, it is painfully slow with some woods. So I'm looking for something with more power, probably a helical head that'll just power through boards a lot faster. And a biggest reason, as you can see behind me here, most of my wood that I get from my hardwood dealer is about 10 to 12 inches wide. So I said my, joiner, or my uh, milling process starts here at the joiner. It actually starts at the table saw because I have to cut that in half before it'll even fit on here. 
So I am looking for a bigger machine, more powerful, but that is not to take away from what this machine does because it has done what it is designed to do. So I still 100% recommend it if this is what you have the size for, if this is what you need. All right, so real quick, we'll jump over to the table saw so I can rip this down so then we can join it. I'm not gonna go in depth on this because this is an outdated model, they've upgraded it. So I can't really speak on it because I don't know what the new one is like. Speaking on the old one, I bought this when they were $300 cheaper than what they're selling the new model for. So for the old price, I would consider it. For the new one, I, I've, the fence does not stay square. You have to adjust it all the dang time. Um, I have an issue with the blade dropping on its own. So it is what it is. I, you know, I don't know how the new model is. So that's something to look into. I get my board straight line ripped on one edge. Meaning you can see this edge is still rough, but this side they have ran through and straightened, or at least it was straight when they cut it. And like I said, that wood probably moved, but it's straight enough for us to run this side along the table saw fence to cut it down to size so it'll fit on the joiner. All right, change of plans. I forgot to hit record before I cut that, but now it's cut down to size. So you can see this board has a cup in it. I don't know if you can see that on video, but it does have a cup in it. So I'm gonna run it through the joiner like this. So the joiner is gonna take off from these outside edges to get this face flat. Without getting into it too much, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave an article link down below in the description. There is a specific way to run these through your joiner and planers so the knives don't create tear out. And that's just following the grain direction. But like I said, I'll leave the article so you can read into that if you're interested. I'm gonna start this in normal speed so you can see how real speed it is. And then I'll probably speed it up just to get through it. And it'll probably take multiple passes to get it flat. You use push sticks, keep your hands away from the knives, be smart, be safe. And you'll notice that once I get it through the knives, I'm gonna keep all my pressure on this table here. You can hear on the video when the knives are cutting more of the board and then it's not because this also had a twist in it so it's taking that out. I wish this wasn't sapwood so you could see it but I'm still low right here so the joiner is pretty much cutting all of this and this side here and this is still low so I still got to make another pass or two to get this completely flat. All right, this is the longer board that I cut this off of. And you can see it's had a pretty bad twist in it too. But now we're completely flat with this piece we just did. That longer board reminded me to talk about this. If I'm running longer boards through here, probably anything over seven feet long, I'll set up these. I like these are the rigid flip tops. And I also have some with the rollers on them. I'll set those out at the end feed and out feed side to help support the board so it's not trying to teeter totter as I'm running it through. Next, I'm gonna take that flat face that we just created and flip it up along the fence to make this edge 90 degrees to it. And this is gonna depend entirely on how well you have the machine set up. And like I said, I dialed it in and it has stayed perfect for me. So we'll go ahead and get this edge squared up to this face now. All right, now we're gonna head over to the thickness planer and bring it down to the final thickness that we want. You can see here, this edge is a lot smaller than this edge. So I'm gonna run this through the, fat, the flat face down and the planer's gonna take off this side before it starts taking off this side to bring this face coplanar with this face. Now people ask, why can't you just run both sides through the planer and get them nice and smooth and everything? Well, planers have pressure feed rollers on them. 
So when I run this board through, this front pressure roller is going to force this board flat along the table here, and it's going to cut it at the thickness that we have it set at. So if this board has a cup or twist or bow or anything into it, the pressure rollers are going to force it flat, and then once we work it through the machine, we pull it out of the outfeed side, it's just going to spring right back into whatever shape it was in. You need that joiner to, to create the flat face, so when the pressure rollers apply pressure, it's already flat on the table. But let's say you only have the budget to buy one of these machines at, at a time. I would recommend buying the planer first because you can make what's called a planer jointing sled. Just YouTube that, there's gonna be a bunch of videos on there. I don't have one. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Buy the planer first because you can joint with a planer if you build a sled to do so. And of course, I would say table saw is number one because you can build a jointing sled to get your straight line joints with your table saw. So search those two sleds if you're interested in that. Real quick on this, this is the Jet 13 inch benchtop planer. It is a helical style head, which I bought this when they first came out and I didn't really know what that meant until I had it. There weren't any picture, pictures or anything with the listing, but you can see there are smaller cutter heads here and they're staggered along the cutter head so and you can flip these so there's blades on each side you can flip these if they get worn out and it, it is a quieter faster cut than just straight knives but it's not a true helical style spiral cutter head now I really do like this jet planer it's done everything I needed to I really don't have anything bad to say about it um, so I do recommend it if you can find it in stock. That's the one thing. Ever since I bought this, it's, I, you know, I put links in the videos for all you guys and people want to look at it and it's always out of stock. So that's one thing. There is another benchtop planer that I would highly recommend though if you're trying to look at one. And that's the DeWalt 735. The DeWalt is $220 cheaper than this one. And having used both, I, honestly having used both, I don't see the $220 difference. It is nice if you get a chip in one of these knives, you can just replace the one instead of the whole knife. But other than that, the cut quality and everything for $220 cheaper, that DeWalt is a great planer. So I'll leave a link to that below as well if you want to look at that. After a couple passes, you can see where I'm cutting here. Still got to go lower here and here to be completely flat. And then we'll take it to our final thickness of three quarters of an inch. Now, once I get this second face coplanar with the first one, I'm going to then begin alternating it as I run it through down to my three quarter inch thickness. That way I'm exposing new grain evenly on both sides of the board. Helps keep it more stable so it doesn't move again on us. Now that both faces are flat and parallel to each other, I would put that square edge that we created on the joiner to start with, I'd put the square edge along the table saw fence and rip whatever size I would need out of this board. So then the other edge would be square and parallel to that edge there from the joiner. All right, there you have it. That's a quick overview of milling rough lumber, why you should, and an overview of some of the lower end budget tools if you're looking to get started. So hopefully that helped any decisions you have to make and thanks for watching. Take care.